and welcome to this week's webinar on decoding graduation requirements. And so my name is Connie Wilson. I'm an admissions counselor here at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, today with me, I have Bailey Carlson, one of my colleagues. Um, he'll be on the chat answering any questions that you have. So um, if you're new to this webinar series, we've been doing it for the past uh, three weeks. This is our third one now, so thank you for joining in today. Um, if you look on the bottom, uh, navigation bar, you'll see different icons. Um, there's a, a little chat bubble. Um, if you click on that, you have access to the chat. And if you have any questions, you will be able to uh, type it in. Since I can't hear you, you can type it in. And then Bailey will be able to answer in the chat. And at the end of the webinar, any additional questions that we have, I'll be able to um, actually answer them for you. So feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, but with that, let's get started. So today is going to be about decoding registration um, and decoding graduation requirements. So a lot of you, maybe when you're registering with STAR or you saw your courses, you saw next to the course name, there's a bunch of alphabets like DA, FGA, DL, um, HSL. A lot of those acronyms, you might be wondering what those are. Uh, maybe you didn't notice. Uh, maybe you actually don't know what classes you need for your, um, your major. And so you might be wondering, okay, well, I can't register if I don't know what classes I need to take. Um, and I'm going to show you where to look for, um, specifically which classes you need to take, as well as going over what those acronyms are. So you understand exactly what's required for you uh, for classes. Okay, um, so we're gonna get right into it. The, the two things I'll be going over is the UH Manoa uh, general education requirements and the program sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, let's go to, um, and I'll be sharing all of these uh, links with you as well. One second, apologies. Okay, right there. Okay, so um, if you are not familiar, um, you have a catalog, and so um, you probably were mailed one, but if not, you can access the catalog online. And so uh, let me just share this link with you on the chat so you can access that for later. All right, so uh, that is the site that I'm on if you wanna click on that link and follow along or you have access that you can go to that later. So basically, um, this is a catalog and it talks about the general education requirements. So as a UH Mono student, you have your major requirements. So let's say you're a biology major, there are some classes you have to take within the biology department to satisfy that major requirement. So everyone knows your biology lab, um, genetics lab, you know, biochemistry, different kind of courses that you'll need for that particular major. But in addition to that, uh, the college or the university in itself, we have different core requirements that you'll have to uh, fulfill. And so I'll be going over those. That's what all those acronyms are. And so there's actually going to be four. So I'll be going over that first. So first is going to be foundations requirements. So your core requirements are made up of these two, foundations requirements and diversification requirements. You'll know if a class fulfills a foundations requirement because it will start with an F. So for example, the first one written here is FW for written communication. Um, and I'll go over what types of courses will fulfill each of the designations, but written communication would be like an English type of class. Uh, FQ or FS, that would be math or quantitative reasoning or symbolic reasoning. And you have your FG, A, B, and C. Uh, so a lot of different acronyms, I'm gonna go over all of that. So uh, follow along with me as I scroll down. Okay. So for your foundations requirements, the first one, FW, uh, these are the courses here, if you can see, right here. 
these are the courses that will fulfill your FW requirement. So most of people will just take English 100 or English 100A as the honors. Um, there's different options there available. You can also take Intro to American Studies writing. There's English for second language learners as well as transfer students. So different options for you available. But again, most people will just select English 100, but you do have a choice there. Um, and as a freshman, uh, for those of you that are incoming freshmen, in your first year, you are required to take English. So it doesn't have to be your first semester, it could be your second semester, but by the end of your first two semesters, you do have to take an English course, which would be this FW. Okay, so the next foundations would be an FS or an FQ. Now recently, they've changed this, so you might see classes that are FS, but for the most part, everyone now is transitioning to be FQ. Basically, that is a math type of course, um, but you don't have to take a math course um, per se. So let's say your major is like American studies or something that is not math intensive or science intensive, um, you do still have to fulfill this quantitative reasoning requirement, but you don't have to take a math course. And you can see from this bullet list here, um, FQ courses on the bottom and FS at the top. Um, there are different types of courses. So you can take applied math, um, discrete math, which is more computer science based. Here's all the actual math courses within math department. Um, and then the FQ here, there is anthropology, there's atmospheric sciences, geology, public health, and philosophy, um, a logic course. So there's different types of courses that you can take, and whether it is um, specifically math or calculus, or whether it's more logic or more quantitative reading and statistics, that will depend. Um, and I'll go over um, how to read, um, you know, the, the course descriptions and, and where to find that later on in this webinar. But uh, if you want to take any notes down, what seems interesting for you, you can just write down the course code, which for here would be, um, let's go to the last one. It says F-H-I-L, so that's philosophy, and the course number is 111. So if you wanted to find a course description for that later, uh, keep note of that, and I'll show you the link for that as well. So scrolling down to the last foundations requirement would be your FGs. So for the FGs, you're actually required to take two of them. So one, one course would be three credits. So you need six credits of an FG. FG is foundations in global and multicultural perspectives. And so basically, um, with those six credits, you have uh, three categories to choose from. So you only need two courses, but you can choose from three different categories. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you're following along, you can look at my screen here. So you have group A, a list of courses, group B, a list of courses, group C, a list of courses. So let's say you're interested in this history 151 world history to 1500s. So that is in category A. So you take that, let's say this coming semester in the fall. So great, you fulfilled one of those courses, you have an FGA. And now to fulfill your second FG course, to get that last three credits for that uh, requirement, you cannot select another course in A group, you would have to choose it in B group or C group. Um, so you have three different categories, but you have to choose two different categories. So since you've chosen something from group A, you can choose something from group B or C, um, it is up to you. So there's a lot of different classes that you can choose from here. Um, some of them may double dip in that you might be able to fill not just an FG course, but you might be able to fill diversification requirements, which is the next section I'm gonna be going over. Um, so I just want to reiterate to you that um, I'm not an academic advisor, I'm an admissions counselor. I'm just providing general knowledge. Um, I'm explaining the course catalog so that when you do meet with your advisor um, and they spit out all these acronyms, you know, you need your FGs, did you do an FW? Like you, you will know what they're talking about. So you have an easier and smoother time understanding the lingo. And hopefully this will help you with kind of choosing your courses. So um, uh, take this in kind of understand if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. And again, for those of you, if you just joined us now, 
if you hover your mouse either at the top or the bottom, you should have um, a little uh, navigation bar that pops up and there's a chat option. So click on chat and you can see everyone's questions and the links that I'm sharing with you, you can see that there. Okay, so that is half of your core requirements. The second half of your core requirements actually are your diversifications. So these are the ones where you'll see a, a lot more acronyms. So scrolling down here, um, basically you have uh, three categories of diversifications. So your arts, humanities, and literatures. Uh, for those ones, you only need uh, two courses. So again, this is the same. You have three categories, but you only need two. So you can choose a DA and DH, or you can choose a DL and DA. That one is up to you. So it stands for Arts, Humanities, and Literature. Um, the next would be DS. So that's not the Game Boy system. Um, that is, it stands for Diversification in Social Sciences. So you need six credits, meaning two courses in that. And then your Natural Sciences. So those would be uh, DB, which is Biology. Uh, DP, so that would be physical science, and DY. DY would be your laboratory. So I'll give you an example of that. So let's start off with natural sciences. Um, so DB is like biological sciences. You don't have to take biology. There are courses that will fulfill a DB requirement without you actually having to take a biology course. Um, so if you want to see a list of the different departments that offer those courses, um, you can look at that on the catalog. You can also ask your advisor when you meet with them and say, hey, you know, uh, maybe biology wasn't your forte in high school. So you can say, I'm not really interested in taking biology. Is there another type of course I can take to fulfill my DB requirement? And they'll be able to point you in the right direction and kind of go over what your four-year plan is, what your major is, and they'll be able to provide a personalized plan for you to fulfill these requirements. Um, so let's say you do take biology and let's say uh, for your physical science you take a chemistry course so you fulfilled your db and your dp so that is perfect your last one would be dy so because you took um, biology and chemistry your your lab your dy has to be either biology or chemistry because that's what you've taken so your lab should complement either of the science courses that you've taken um, so just to kind of clarify if that was confusing, so let's say you take biology and you want to take chemistry. Those are your two science courses that you're choosing to take. Um, you have biology and chemistry and you need a lab, so you should take either biology and biology lab at the same time. Or if you don't want to take biology lab, you just want to take biology to fulfill that requirement, you can do chemistry lab and the chemistry lecture. So you, you have that option there. And again, we have more than just biology and chemistry. There's a whole bunch of different things. Um, if you're interested in astronomy, we do have astronomy and astronomy lab. Astronomy lab meets at night. I believe it's like six or it, the time uh, differs um, in the semester, but you'll actually be able to um, track the different moon phases and you get to kind of experience that at night. It's really cool. As an undergraduate, I took astronomy lab and it was very fun. Um, so you don't have to stick to, you know, courses that are set. It's not like high school. You do get to kind of craft and create your own class schedule. So any interest you have, this is a time to kind of branch out and look to see what is offered because you can go in something completely new and love it. Um, okay, so that would be your diversification. So if you see anything, DA, DB, all of these acronyms, um, that's what those are. Those are just a type of core requirement. And so when I was mentioning things that could double dip, so let's say, um, so for me, I was, one of my majors was communicology. And so I took a class in communicology that fulfilled um, an FW and a DA. So what does that mean? That class was a written communication course, but it also fulfilled a diversification arts course, meaning I don't have to take two separate classes to cover those two requirements. I can take one class that would double dip. So it's kind of like two birds with one stone. So you don't have to waste time. You can choose classes strategically that way. So that's another good reason uh, why you should meet with your advisor so that you can um, 
ask these things, say, hey, you know, are there classes that will double dip with my major requirements and my general education requirements? Will anything double dip? Do I have to take multiple courses? Um, so having that conversation with your advisor will really help um, figuring out, you know, your personalized for your plan, as well as making sure that you're not kind of wasting time and you're not bombarding yourself with a bunch of classes when you can take less classes to fulfill the same amount of requirements. So it's just kind of choosing classes strategically. Okay, so we're gonna move on from your core requirements to uh, the rest of your requirements. So you have uh, core requirements as part of your general education. You also have focus and the last one is Hawaiian second language. So next we're gonna talk about focus requirements. So there's different focuses. Um, there's actually four. So if you can look here on the screen, um, H or HAP, so that you actually have to take a um, Hawaiian studies type of course or an Asian Pacific issues type of course. So most people will take Hawaiian Studies 107 to fulfill this Hawaiian or Hawaiian Asian Pacific course, um, as well as, you know, if you're interested in, in Asian studies or Pacific studies and you want to go that route, you're also able to do that. Um, but that's just a requirement for UH Manoa graduates. Um, next would be ethics. So you might see an E or ETH. Either way, it fulfills an ethics course. So this is where you don't have to search out, okay, what is an ethics course? What courses will I have that is, are ethics? Um, this is where you will meet with your advisor to kind of figure out which of your major requirements fulfill an ethics course. Whereas your, your core requirements, you actually have to look through a list and see which course you wanna to take to fulfill those requirements. For your focus requirements, these will definitely double dip because these will kind of go along with your major requirements. Um, so I'll go over what major requirements are in just a second. I want to just explain to you what your general education requirements are first, because there are two, gen ed and then your major requirements. After you fulfill both, then you can graduate. Um, oral communication, so that is, you know, a speech type of class or a class that has a lot of oral presentations, um, so that you can see here, 300 or 400 level, um, you need to have just one course. And then last would be writing intensive. So the first three courses that I went over, you only have to have one course. So one class of ethics, one class of oral communication, one class of Hawaiian, Asian or Pacific um, studies. But for your writing intensive, you actually need five courses for writing intensive. Um, and so you can see, um, this is exactly where your major requirements will kind of come through. It's, it says at least two need to be at the 300 or 400 level. So when you are taking, um, when you are a, a junior and senior, you'll be taking the upper division classes specifically in your major. So I'm gonna go with the example of business. So let's say you're a business major. Your first two years, you will not be taking business classes. You'll be taking pre-business classes in order to get into the business school. Then when you are a junior, once you're actually in the business school, and you're taking upper division classes, then you'll be taking you know, finance, marketing, um, human resources, those type of specific classes. That is where you will need to have your writing intensive classes. Two of them need to be at the upper division. So that means in your first two years, you can take three that are lower division courses. And again, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to um, enter on the chat. We will be able to answer any questions you have. Um, and we're just trying to make things clear for you so that when you meet with your advisor, you're not totally lost and it makes sense to you. Okay, um, so the last one would be Hawaiian or second language requirement, also called HSL. And so here at the University of Hawaii, uh, we are one of the universities that offer the most languages that you can learn from. Uh, we offer more than 25 different languages. So if you want to learn Chinese, we have different dialects of Chinese, if you want to learn German, we have German, um, Arabic, we have a lot of different languages that you can choose from. So with the exception of certain majors, um, everyone needs to take a foreign language. So that can either be the Hawaiian language or you know one of the other 25 languages that we offer. Um, so a lot of people might have questions about language placement exams. If you have questions about placement exams, um, 
listen closely because I'll be talking about you know how to contact them, what to do. So for the second language requirements, um, you need to complete four semesters. So 101, 102, 201, 202. Those are the four courses that you need, uh, and they can be in any language. Um, so for me, as an undergraduate, I chose German. So I, I didn't take German in high school. I didn't want to take the place in the exam because I knew no German at all. So I decided, okay, I would just start at the 101 level. Um, if I had chosen Spanish, however, I took up to Spanish 3 when I was in high school. And so if I wanted to, I could have taken the placement exam and I could have possibly gotten placed into a level higher than 101. So if you're interested in, if you have a really high proficiency in a certain language, you don't need to t start from 101. You can actually contact the department and get placed into a higher class. Um, you would just have to um, contact them, and sometimes it's just a conversation with them. Um, other times you actually have to take an exam. Each department is different in their policies, um, and each department, um, they do things just a little bit differently. So what worked for me in German will work differently for someone in Japanese, will work differently for someone in Italian. It is all different. And so if you are interested in taking a language placement exam, you would need to search for their website. Um, and later when I go over the program sheets, you'll actually be able to click on um, that link and see what their website is. So just hang tight for that list of links. Um, but after you fulfill your HSL, then that is it for your general education requirements. So that would most likely be your first two years um, taking classes with the exception of some of the classes that have to be upper division, those you would fulfill in your junior and senior years. So after you take most of those gen ed classes, then it would be time for you to kind of move into your major requirements. So I've been saying this name a lot, major requirements versus general education requirements. So I'm gonna go over what a program sheet is and then it'll make it a lot more clearer. So if there's any questions with the general education requirements, uh, feel free to uh, type it in the chat and we'll be more than welcome to answer them. Uh, but if you no know questions, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the program sheets. So this is the link to the program sheets. I'll enter it into the chat for you guys. Okay, so let me just write here a note, program sheets. So if you click on that link, you'll be taken to this page and you can see here um, it is a sample of a four year academic plan. So remember I was talking about if you're interested in taking a foreign language requirement and you want to place into that, you can do that by clicking on the language here. Um, or even if you're just interested in and you want to go to um, a department's website. So let's say the dance department, if you want to go to the website, you would just click that here and it'll take you to their website. So this, this uh, serves multiple purposes. This can be a list of helpful department website links. Um, it can also give you more information on what you need for your um, education for your next four years here. So let's, do, let's just scroll down and see what we have. Um, languages, ling linguistics, and literature. So you'll have some of your languages here, natural sciences here. Um, and it is separated by college. So in your acceptance letter, you um, have a major, but before your major is listed, it tells you what college you're a part of. So for example, here, Scheidler is the College of Business. So that's, um, that's the only uh, department or kind of school that it holds is uh, business in Scheidler. But let's see the College of Social Sciences above. It has a lot of different um, departments, a lot of different majors offered here. So uh, when people ask, oh, what, what college um, are you a part of? What colleges you major in? People are, might be thinking, oh, but I'm, I'm a biology major. I, my college is University of Hawaii Manoa. Um, they might be talking about what college your major is a part of. So that might be the little difference that they have there. Um, so let's just choose one and let's say um, you want to major in economics. Okay, so economics here, if I click on that, it will take us to the economics homepage um, and then we can see all about them, figure out the contact us and see if you wanna email someone, get their number, look at different items, um, we have an option. Uh, we'll go back to here. So let's economics, scroll down. This is a program sheet. 
So this program sheet will tell us what the requirements are for that major. So I'm going to click to download. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure that it is uh, being shared with you. So give me one second. Okay, so I think you have access to that now. So this is, let's make it bigger. Okay, so this would be a program sheet. So let's say, you know, you're interested in, um, you're interested in economics. And so this would be the program sheet you have for economics. This is list, list all the classes you will need to be an econ major. So you have all of the things I just mentioned, the general education requirements, as well as the graduation requirements, it's listed on the first page. So that typically will happen first. So you see FW, FQ, FG. So now you know what those are and now you know where to look to fulfill those requirements. Same thing with diversification, same thing with the graduation requirements, right? So all of that you understand now. Um, it also gives you more information if you scroll down here. Um, it says that in order to graduate, you need a minimum of 120 credits. Uh, 45 of them need to be upper division. 30 of them need to be taken at UH Manoa. So if you want to transfer over, or if you are a transfer student, um, that kind of tells you how many credits you'll need as an econ major in order to graduate here at UH Manoa, as well as the GPA needed um, to declare that major or to continue in that major. So this is just good general information. But after that, you might be wondering, okay, what other classes do I take? I'm sure you have to take a lot of econ courses if you're gonna be econ major. And so that's what the second page is here. So the second page of all the program sheets will go over what the major requirements are to be that major. So you can see here, open admission, that means you don't have a list of prerequisite courses for business and nursing and engineering. You do have to take a set of prerequisite courses, so courses that you need to take in order to apply to the College of Business, the School of Nursing, the School of Engineering, um, to be in that major. So this one is open, so if you see open versus closed or open versus uh, a date, then it'll tell you, okay, um, it'll give you more information on declaring that major. So you can see here there's requirements, um, Econ 131, Econ 130, as well as Econ 300, 301, 321, you can see all of that. Um, so within each major, they will have their own set of core classes. So in the Department of Economics, their core classes are these five, Econ 130, 131, 300, 301, 321. Those are their core classes. After that, then you have your elective courses and you can choose any elective course that you want. That is, let's see, three of them are upper division above 300, and then these ones are above 400. So that's how you'll decide, um, that's how you'll decide what classes to take. Um, so if you're interested in, if you have not registered yet, this is kind of how you will see what class you should take. But again, um, definitely go over this with your advisor. This just gives you more information on understanding where to find things. So let's um, get out of this screen and let's go back to um, let's go back to the program sheets. Okay, so we did econ, so let's stick with econ. Um, plan template. We're gonna download that and I'll share it with you. And this is the last um, item on our agenda for the webinar today. Okay, and let me just make sure that it's being shared. Got it, okay. All right, so um, this may look a little confusing. Uh, this is basically everything that you've just seen, but in a chart, and it's separated by year. So, so it shows you year one, first semester, second semester, year two, first semester, second semester, what classes you'll need. So this is a really great plan to follow when choosing your courses. And then when you meet with your advisor, you can say, you know, this is what I've chosen for my first semester 
um, is this good? Are there more classes I can take? What do you suggest? You can, it opens a dialogue between you and your advisor. That way um, you don't waste your time or his time, his or her time. You can kind of figure out exactly what you want um, for your four year plan in economics or whatever major that you want. So it says here, you know, year one, fall, um, Econ 130, and you see DS, so that is a social science. So taking Econ 130, as we've seen, it uh, fulfills an economics core requirement as the major, but the DS also fulfills a general education requirement for diversification in social sciences. So that is one of the courses that fulfill um, two courses in one, so that's kind of the double dipping. So you'll see that will happen a lot with your courses. So the more double dips, the better. That means the less classes that you uh, need to take um, to fulfill those requirements. So uh, this is just for econ, but again, you can do this with any major, it is listed there. So this was just an example. Let me go back to the program sheet. Just make sure you have all of that. So I'll just scroll down so you can see there's more things available, College of Education, College of Engineering, um, the Law School of Medicine, those are graduate schools. But if you are interested, you can see what their plan looks like. Um, and if you're interested in wondering, um, you know, I declared this major, but I might want to change my major to something else, and you want to see what classes will I need to take, you can look at this program sheet and look at the four-year plan template and see each semester what classes you should take, or you can also look on STAR. All of this information is on STAR as well, um, but a lot of people don't really look at the catalog, but the catalog provides a lot of rich information that people don't necessarily read on, but it's really good to know that way you're, um, you're more informed, you know what classes to take, that way you don't have to um, take multiple courses to fulfill the same requirement. So for me, when I was a freshman, um, as I was waiting for school to, to start, I looked through the catalog and I figured out oh wow, there's a lot of information here. And I basically knew what classes I had to take day one. So the first day of school, I knew exactly what all the classes I needed to take for the rest of my four years here. And that kind of helped me with figuring out, you know, if I wanted to study abroad, how can I fit study abroad into my four-year plan? If I wanted to do a job on campus, if I wanted to add a lot of extracurriculars, having this baseline of a four-year plan allows you to be able to um, get more involved and kind of add more things into your plate. So that can make it really helpful when trying to figure out how you can make your manure experience like uniquely yours. So it's really good um, information here. So you have the links here, um, but besides that, that is all we have for you. Um, that's all the content is. Again, it's really, really useful information. Uh, share this with your friends. Your friends, you're probably asking, ah, oh, you know, I can't meet wait with my advisor until next week, but I really want to know. Then you'll be like, hey, you know, I saw this webinar. I know where you can look to figure out what classes you have to take. So uh, you got a head start on everyone else. Um, if you do have questions, you know, put it in the chat. Uh, let me just see if I can get the chat. Uh, okay, so it looks like Bailey has already addressed a lot of the questions that we have here in the chat room, uh, but if you have any questions at all, feel free to um, type it in this chat box. You can also email us, you can also call us, so I'm going to ask Bailey if he can uh, put our information there. So um, at the end of this webinar, if you do have questions, uh, maybe you don't have the questions now, but you have questions later, you'll be able to ask us later. All right, um, so that's all we have for you. Um, I'll just wait for the information to be put down. Um, make sure to check your email. We'll be sending you the recorded file. So uh, if you know friends that weren't able to meet at this time, but you know that they were interested in learning about graduation requirements, um, we'll be sending a mass email, just like how you received this invitation. Uh, so you have that link, you can download it, you can share it with friends. Uh, so feel free to do so. Um, join us next time for our next webinar. It'll be really interesting, really good stuff. So thanks for tuning in.